All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliners. Here I am joining you from a lovely sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Annie Meehan, who is up in Minneapolis. How are you doing, Annie? Great. How are you? So Annie's a keynote speaker, award-winning um, author, and exceptional life expert. Which that's, yeah. a, that's a great title to have. Um, and you have just written a new book called The Pineapple Principle. Correct. And so I'm intrigued, as I'm sure my, my listeners and viewers are, to find out what exactly is the Pineapple Principle. Well, I've been a motivational speaker for a long time, and people always want seven steps, ten steps. How do we do things right? And I thought, what if I could make make it simpler for you? What if I could give you a visual that's three steps or less on how to live your life? And so I was taught a poem called the pineapple poem. And it goes like this, be a pineapple, stand up straight, wear a crown, be sweet on the inside. Kind of simple and cute and sweet, right? But isn't there more to life than being simple and cute and sweet? Yes. So I said, what does it mean? Hopefully for myself. I hopefully, yeah. right? But, <laughs> but I think that those three simple little things can teach us a lot. So sure. if we stand up straight, we actually see people. In a world where most of us are looking down at our phones, yeah. or looking out at what's next, or looking down because we're self-conscious, when we stand up straight, we literally see people. And so the first thing was, I was uh, many things happened because I started thinking intentionally, how do I live like a pineapple? And started teaching audiences. And so I stood up and I was in a bathroom and I walked over to a woman and started just speaking to her. I touched her arm, just started asking her questions, was kind to her, felt drawn to her. And she was kind of rough and said, why are you talking? Why are you being nice? I said, I don't know. I just want to be nice to you. After a few conversations, I had to go down the hall to speak. She wanted to join me, ultimately was included, but then asked to leave. And during my presentation, she left me a note and I followed up with a phone call and ultimately asked to go see her to bring her some gift cards. She came out to my car crying and I said, what's wrong? And she said, you don't understand. I'm 36 years old and you're the first person that actually looked up and really saw me without judgment. She was mm -hmm. an exotic dancer and felt judged by the whole world. Sure. The wearing your crown part is that if we're valuable, then we treat ourselves different, right? Like if I get up in the morning and said, what do I feel like doing? I want to drink vanilla lattes and eat donuts all day, right? Mm -hmm. But what am I worth doing because I have a crown on and I'm valuable? I go to the gym. I make healthier choices. I talk kinder about myself. And if I notice your crown and everyone else's, I, I talk kinder about you and I value you. So I value your opinion, your thoughts, your differences, and your similarities. And the last part, the being sweet on the inside. Well, if we're sweet, then what comes through our keyboard or through our headphones or through our mouth is kindness and encouragement and sweetness. So the pineapple principle was really just a story that I told, but then more and more people were like, ah, write that in a book. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Write that in a book. Oh my gosh, do you know what happened because you told that story? Oh my gosh. And so I got all these stories of people saying how this simple um, poem that became a principle significantly changed their life. And so that that yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a that's a wonderful um, outline that you've given because at the end of the day, I do think that you know life is relatively simple. It's it's we humans that somehow manage to complicate it. So let me just come back to um, you know this idea of, of of standing up and seeing people, right? I mean, we we live in an increasingly self -absor absorbed world, if you like. We also live in this kind of comparison. I call it the comparison culture. It's where you know, people are on social media all day and all they're seeing is like all the wonderful things you have or you do. And like, I'm feeling, you know, inadequate in, in, in uh, comparison when the realities may be completely different, but I've filled in all the gaps, right? To make your life wonderful in my life. So how do people get out of that mode of number one, being kind of self-absorbed, but also kind of envious and feeling inadequate as a result of, of comparing themselves with other people? Yeah. Um, there's so many tips I could share about that. I was just working with a client earlier today and he was asking me, Annie, like you just expose yourself on social media. You show your messy parts, your silly parts. I said, well, that's my brand and that's who I really am. They call me authentically Annie. And so one way that I teach people, because he was saying, I want to tell this, but what if people judge me or don't like me? And I said, oh, they will. Some mm -hmm. will not like you. Some will judge you, but some will love you even more. And when I got done coaching him, got on a call with a woman who found me on LinkedIn and said, I love you. So here's what I say to people. What helps me not compare is to show up in wonder. So when we, if we want to be part of the solution, personally for ourselves, 
or for our audience members, we have to show our authentic self. When our mm -hmm. hair is sticking up straight, when we don't get it right, we have to share our stories without calling ourselves a failure of when it doesn't turn out perfectly. Um, and so I really try to do that. Personally, I embrace that. I also encourage people to make fun of themselves, to look at their wrinkles and quit editing your picture and showing when you're taking 40 pounds off. And not everybody will do it, but let me tell you something, I have a lot more joy because I do live in the reality of how I actually look and of my challenging days. And I get rejected all the time as a speaker, as a writer, but I also get a lot of people that love me and want more of me. And so looking, expecting that sometimes it won't work out. Um, comparison, I, I, another thing about social media, I say limit your time mm -hmm. because we say comparison's a thief of all joy. So yep. as soon as we look at that and we think we have a good life, someone else looks better, people show their formal living room and dining room vacuum lines sure. on social media, but it's not their messy family room that they actually live in, right? And yeah, so I just yeah. encourage people to think about that, to put a lens on what you compare to, to try not to compare, to look at what's good in your life and focus on that. Live a life of gratitude really helps with that. Live a life of generosity, offering kindness, encouragement to other people. So... Yeah, because I like that idea of the fact if you're standing up and looking outwards, that you're not looking, standing up and looking outwards to compare yourself. You're standing up and looking outwards to see what's out there, to see who other people are, to see the, the worth in th those around you. Absolutely. To see people to honor their stories. And that's what I also talk about. Sometimes people compare themselves and say, I have the worst life. Well, there's always someone that has worse. Sure. Sometimes I think I have the best life. And there's always someone that has better, right? And so mm -hmm. comparison just doesn't help us. But when we truly look up and actually see people, then we value that person, but we can hold their stories. And the more we actually pay attention without all the distractions, the safer people feel listening to us mm -hmm. and listening to our stories and that they are being heard by us with their stories. Yeah, and so how, can you, how do you help people? So, you know, standing up and that and, and being nice to people, but not everybody believes they have a crown to wear, right? So how do you help people who, who don't believe that they have a crown? It's really heartbreaking for me that people don't, but you're right, they don't. Another analogy I use, which is kind of silly, but it works for some people, is that I believe all people that I meet are in a Winnie the Pooh story. And so I wonder about what character are you? You know, are you, are you Tigger bouncing around? I think of myself like that. Are, are you the you rabbit, <laughs> right? Or are you Eeyore? Mm -hmm. And a man wrote to me last week and he said, I'm Eeyore, Annie. And he said, but what I realize is I'll never be a Tigger, but if I listen to you more and watch some of your videos, maybe someday I can become a Winnie the Pooh. And so really one of the tools that I encourage people to do is visually think about a toolbox. What is in there? Do you have personal development books? Mm -hmm. Are you listening to the right podcast? Are you listening to the right things? Get rid of the negative. There's so much. I don't personally watch the news. There's a lot of negative out there. So in order people feel valuable, you have to kind of surround yourself with good stuff that reminds you you're valuable. And when I go for a walk, whether I feel like it or not in the beginning, I'm always grateful at the end. So I ask yeah. people, what are one or two simple things you could do for yourself that would prove to yourself you have more value? So if you drink five cans of soda a day, could you drink three and have mm -hmm. a glass of water? Could you right. go for a walk for 10 minutes? Could you read something positive? Could you journal three good things about yourself every night before you go to bed and read them in the morning? Because gratitude is what we're grateful for, what we have in life, but it's also very you-centered, I-centered. But when we write down how we gave away, we start to value, I can make a contribution to the world mm -hmm. by my kindness, by my generosity, with my words, or with my patience, whatever it is. Yeah, so, I love that. And it can be as simple as, uh, as you say, with your patience. Like maybe instead of adding to negativity in the world, maybe you're just patient that one little time that you feel like snapping at the person who's delaying you or whatever it is. But one, one thing I wanted to come back to, somebody came up with this um, uh, description the other day that I thought was great. And they said, like, there's so many people indulging in recreational anger these days. And that's why I like what you said about the news, because I always say to people nowadays is, I, I don't care where you're on the political spectrum. The news you watch is not designed to inform you, it's designed to provoke a reaction. So if you want to start off your day angry, go ahead, watch your news. Watch ever news of your choice and be angry, but it's not helping you. And the things you're getting angry about, you probably have zero uh, impact on anyway. Right. 
That is absolutely right. And that's what I say. I really try to teach people, you can be a difference maker. It doesn't have to be huge. Mm -hmm. You can be patient. If you know someone under the age of five or over the age of 70, they're probably repeating stories to you. And when you tell them, you've already told me that five times, it makes them feel little. Yes. But when you ask them a question, what happened? How did it play out? Even though you know the answers, it makes them feel honored and heard. And that is why I don't watch the news is I believe that it provokes, I'm sorry about that. It provokes sure. a negativity um, in a person. And a woman was yelling at me at a conference once saying, you're an intelligent influencer in the world. How can you not watch the news? Did you know that this happened? And she was so animated. She started sweating by the time she got to tell me. And I said, how are you feeling right now? How's your blood pressure? Yeah. It's high. I'm angry. I said, see, I don't have that feeling in my yeah. life. I believe I can be a difference maker as much as anything I see on the news. And I can do it in my home and in my neighborhood and community. You see, and that's, and that's where I think, and, and I just want to under, underline that point because I think that's hugely important is most of the things that people are getting angry and animated about, yeah, sure, you can, you can sit around, have a few beers and get angry about them and, and you know, surround yourself with like-minded people and just rant and rave, or you can find people who disagree with you and rant and rave at that. Impact you're going to make on, on the issue probably is less than zero. However, if you try to be the best person you can be, the best partner, spouse, whatever, the best parent, the best neighbor in your community, you already are making a far bigger impact than all of these ranting people put together. Absolutely. That is what I say. I say, when was the last time you baked some banana bread or made some soup for your neighbors? When was the last time you went to a park with your kids and cleaned up the neighborhood? You can be a difference maker in a small way in your own community that does have a, trip, a ripple, ripple yeah. effect. I'm blessed to have a large audience on social media, to speak to people all over the world, but not everybody has that much space to sure. influence, but because I do, I don't take it lightly. It's a privilege and I want to use it for good. So I, I have bad days. We all do, but I try to always look for the good stuff, even in the difficult days and then spread that joy. I was working out yesterday and the trainer said to me, why are you always smiling when you work out? I said, I don't know. I don't know if I'm happy that I'm here getting it done or if I'm grinning and bearing it, but either way, why not smile? I love to smile. So mm -hmm. he may, he yeah. laughed at me, but. Yeah. No, I, I love that because um, I, I, I do martial arts and, and I do some boxing as well. And I tell you, I'll be honest, I mean, there are days, like you said, there are days when I'm like, oh, it's the last thing I feel like doing. And I may not be smiling while I'm doing it always. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but once I'm done, I always just feel like I am so glad I did that and didn't flake on it. Yeah. And I always have a great feeling. And I do think, I think that's the people need to find things like that that can give them those feelings of, of accomplishment. And there, you, it, it doesn't have to be major things, right? Just simple things Absolutely. to build your own self-confidence. That is exactly right. Exactly right. I get to work with a lot of clients that come to me feeling depleted and overwhelmed and beaten down by the world. And I'm like, you're giving the world too much credit. Decide to like yourself. Because here's the truth. Not everyone will like us. Not everyone will yeah. think we're great. But if we like ourselves and we bring that joy into the world, it might affect a couple people in a positive way. And I would rather affect one person in a positive way than a million people in no way because of my own negativity or whatever. And one of the men, I, I spoke to a large audience and a friend was asking me, did you make an impact on them? I said, I don't know. And it was a three-day conference. And on the third day, a man came up to me and he said, you know, five years ago, my wife died. And when she died, I buried myself with her and I've been raising mm, my son's dead. Wow. But because of your words and your encouragement today, I've decided to come back to life. I've decided to value myself, which I did not do. And so for me, it's about that one that I get to touch, that one that here's my words, here's my voice, here's some kindness and says, what if, what if I could be positive? What if there is hope, even when I feel deflated? And mm -hmm. I know, and I think that's great. Um, that's a great analogy or that's a great um, lesson but the other thing that you just touched upon there i just think that idea and i think people if more people embrace the idea is like you can't be liked by everybody it's impossible and it doesn't make you a bad person right there's just sometimes there's you know personality or there's who knows what's going on with the other person all right but you can't i mean that's a lesson i learned a long time ago and to be honest uh, i remember quite recently somebody something happened and then, uh, you know, somebody was saying, are, are you upset about that? And I'm like, no, I don't care. And they said, well, you never, you never seem to care about things like that. And I said, yeah, because I said, I don't expect to be liked by everybody. And, um, and I'm fine if some people don't, some people, and there's people I respect and I want them to respect me. And to be honest, there's people who may not like me, but they'll respect me at the same time. But I think that idea, and I think that's another cultural thing that seeped into our culture, the fact that, you know, 
because and that social media is partly to blame for with all your likes and it's like everybody has to love you well that's not not the case you're going to kill yourself with that idea exactly it's exhausting to try and make everyone love you and a girlfriend told me once about a presentation she heard she said it was the best presenter in her whole life she laughed she cried she was so emotional and she was there with her best friend she turned to her friend wasn't that woman amazing she's the best speaker i ever heard and her friend goes huh i think she was okay <laughs> and that was such a great re reality check for me because not everyone's gonna like you but it isn't always about you it's about them and their story and you are meant to give your best every day and then some will like you and some won't and it's okay either yeah. way and if it impacts one person, you know, then you've done a lot more than a lot of people. So tell me, um, in the last few moments we have, do you have any favorite stories from your book that you want to share? My, my other book, Be the Exception, won a national mm -hmm. award in the category of self-help. And there's so many stories in that one that give you hope. I, I love the story I, I wrote about the man who, in the Pineapple Principle, I wrote about the man who said he decided to come back to life after hearing me speak yeah. for his two boys. That's probably my favorite. Um, in that one, but in Be the Exception, I, I talk about how we can take something challenging in our life and we can turn around a dark season and see goodness in it. And at one season, when I was a little girl, we were very poor and we ate out of dumpsters sometimes. And we ate all these angel food cakes one time, 300 angel food cakes. And I was telling someone, it kind of made me sad. Like we lived on them for three weeks. Mm -hmm. It made me sick. I still hate angel food cake. And she's smiling. And I'm like, why are you smiling? Like, this is a very sad story for me. She goes, I love this story. I'm like, why do you love this so much? She's like, because you go in a dumpster for food. It could have been any food, <laughs> but 300 angels met you in that dumpster. Wow. It helped me shift that sad story perspective to another one of some great beauty and how we look at the dark seasons of our life. And I love to show people the silver lining and the challenges and the changes. And so that's one of my favorite stories because mm -hmm. people read it and they call me right away. Oh my gosh, I love this story. That's so amazing. It's so accurate. But for many years I had lived with uh, it as being such a dark thing, but she found beauty in it, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. I have to say that's very moving. And um, it is a fantastic story. And especially when somebody puts it in the context of like 300 angels in a dumpster waiting for you. That's, that's just right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's incredible. Um, and, and just so, it, it just as, as we wrap this up, I mean, what would you say to people? I mean, I like that idea. You say there's a lot of people in dark places and we always know that what's the, it's, it's always the darkest hours before the dawn. And I think sometimes people don't see that or clouds, they can't find silver linings. What, what is your advice to people if they're in a, in a dark place, how to at least start that process of climbing out? Is it sad for me to say, read one of my books? No, um, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I would uh, highly recommend people to do that. <laughs> I do highly recommend people to read my books, but I wrote them specifically with people that were depressed in mind mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people are in dark seasons of their life. And so I wrote them in bigger letters, small, small nuggets per page. So find something to lift you up. So, sometimes the best thing is I love to teach people move your body, even if it's just for a few moments, go for a walk, do something every day. I love to teach people uh, do something kind for yourself you know, listen to uplifting music, light a candle, go get a pedicure, you know, whatever it is, do something kind for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because we're, when we're in darkness, we're so self-centered. And actually what I really tell people when they're really struggling is who have you served lately? I ask them. And then I say, what if we go to a food, food shelf and serve someone? What if we do? Because when we get out of ourself in our darkness, which is hard to do if you are mm -hmm. depleted in energy and emotion, but if you can, if you can listen to a little up in the lifting music and get yourself to a place where you can go serve a child or an elderly person or a sick person, it really does get us out of ourselves and help slowly shift that perspective that life is overwhelming. Yes, I recommend my books. I have a few online courses and books and audio and Kindle, um, but it's not all about me. It's yeah. whatever tools you need in your toolbox right now that can help you lift your spirits and lift your perspective to know that good is coming in one way or another, whether you can see it or feel it or not. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a that's a beautiful way of putting it. And I do think, unfortunately, I think, you know, depression and that is so much more widespread than people even realize. And I think there's a lot of depressed people out there who don't even recognize that they are. 
Yes. And I think it's, it's so I would highly recommend. OK, so before we finish, um, can you tell everyone how they can find out a little bit more about you and where they can go to get your books? I presume they're all on Amazon. We'll have them on sales pop in, in your contributor profile as well as in our, our bookstore um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you. Yeah, my website is just AnnieMeehan.com. So it's A-N-N-I-E-M-E-E-H-A-N.com. But another thing I thought of was I have about 200 or so videos on YouTube and they're a minute or two long. And it's just a great place. People will write to me all the time. Oh my gosh, I watch your YouTube video every morning just as a little pick me up. So YouTube videos are great. Yes, I'm on Amazon. I'm at Barnes and Noble, Kindle, Audio. Um, my books and materials are out there. My website has the most. It has some mm -hmm. blogs and videos. It also has my courses. But um, go wherever you need to go to find something to lift up your spirit, not only for yourself, but so you can bring that joy back in the world. Many people struggle and too many um, struggle alone. And if I can help mm -hmm. one or two or many more, I'm happy to do it. Well, this has been fantastic, Annie. It's been very uplifting. I've actually feel, uh, I feel, um you know, invigorated, reinvigorated this yeah. afternoon from chatting with you. I'm so delighted that you made time for us. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM, Annie Meehan up in Minneapolis. I uh, thank you once again and uh, see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you.